What did you learn from uh, Melissa Cross? Cross. I just uh, I I learned a really good warm up technique and, and a way to preserve your voice. You know, she's she specializes in like metal singers and guys that scream a lot. So she has a technique to that uh, I haven't really got to use that much since the lessons because we haven't been playing that much. But I think that I learned quite a bit from her, and um, I think that the things that I will be using will. Preserved my voice for years. It was. It seemed like a pretty good uh, string of lessons. So was the breathing, breathing technique? Everything, or? breathing. Um, from all these weird, like zzz, you do these things, uh, like these really strange uh, noises that you make with your mouth, and it's like loosening up your your vocal cords and your your neck. It's a, it's a muscle, you know. So it needs to be stretched out. Just like before you go running, you don't just take off running. You know, you stretch. Same same idea, you know, you got to stretch out, you got to take time to really preserve your voice and when you're on tour, try not to be in the bar all night yelling over the PA music, you know, things that you never really remember when you're on tour anyway, you know, but just things to be aware of, you know, that are, you know, she gave you the list of what can hurt your voice and how to prevent it. It's up to you to really do it. Okay. So she's a bright lady I, and I was honored to be able to work with her. Okay, well my last question then, um, well you had some guests on the album, um, well I just wrote down three of them, mm -hmm. um, maybe you can comment on them and why you ask them. Um, Tom Gomez. Uh, he was a, a good friend of uh, Thomas's from touring with Killswitch because he was the uh, stand-in drummer for Killswitch and uh, uh, they just became really really close friends and Thomas thought it was a good idea to have Tom on the record, and we were all for it because he's an amazing drummer. And why on why on that song in particular? Is there um, any reason? Well, it was a song that Steve and I were writing for to have Jonah Jenkins on, and when Thomas was telling us, "Hey, I'd like to have Tom on the record," um, then we were like, "Well, let's have them both on this song because uh, it just seemed pretty cool to do." So we knew it was an unorthodox thing to have a drummer come on a record that isn't in the band. I don't, I, don't, I don't know anybody that has done that before. I'm sure there has been, but um, we just thought it was, uh, he's a good friend of ours, and it was really our drummer, Thomas, really wanted his friend to be a part of the record too, so no more than no less, you know, really, that's, yep. that was the reason behind it. Okay, and then, oh, you already mentioned um, Jonah Jenkins. Uh, Jonah's yeah. just, you know, one of my favorite singers of all time, probably one of the most influential persons vocally, lyrically, everything about the guy I was really into, you know, when I was a big fan of his band in the, in the early 90s, mid 90s, uh, and just became friends with him over over the internet, and uh, just... But what then, what, what, was his, what was his influence over you? What did he... Well, he's in a band called Only Living Witness, and uh, it was one of my favorite bands, me and Steve, mm -hmm. uh, and it just was uh, the beginning of this band, I think, is when we kind of really started getting into them. And just, if you read his lyrics, you almost need a dictionary to figure out what, he's very intelligent. And uh, just the way that he's thinking and using all these cool words, it's just that, uh, you know, he, he works in a library at Harvard. So uh, real book smart guy and just has a lot of cool ways of expressing himself. And I was always into that, like, I like people that are not the norm, I guess, and, and that are pushing the envelope. And I think that he was way overlooked in his in his time in that band. I think that they were really underrated, but um, which is fine. You know, they were still one of my favorite bands, and uh, it was just really great to be able to have him come and meet him and, and really hang around with him and talk about life and, and listen to him and videotape him while he did his vocal tracks is something that I'll forever be extremely proud of. And what does he think of your music? Um, Did he, he tell you? He liked it because he wouldn't have done it. He wouldn't have sang with us if he didn't like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So we knew that. I mean, he, he, he expressed that he thought that we were a cool band and um, things like that. So, yeah, I mean, it was an equal, nice honor for him to give us the compliments that he has given us. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And the last one for me, um, Howard Jones. Hojo. Yep, Howard, <laughs> just, he has been a good friend of ours for years, and uh, it was just a thing that we had talked about on the last record, uh, and when this record came around to writing, you know, we just 
started writing the songs. There was a song that I figured he would fit on, and I called him up. He said yes, came down, hung out with us, and that's basically all it was. You know, Howard's just a, a good pal of ours, and we were, we we're also very glad that he could be a part of it. But how come you, you thought he was good part uh he was good for that that song um well the song was just really heavy you know and i was uh thinking about a song that maybe howard would be on it's probably one of the heaviest if not the heaviest tracks on the record and he's a pretty heavy guy so uh, <laughs> we figured it was a good fit for us to have howard come on and if we were going to have howard on the record that was probably the best fit for him yeah well, thank you awesome thank you thanks